It's Superstar versus Half a Star. This is the worst. <laughs> Welcome into the worst fantasy show. I am your host with the least, Jack Lucene. We are continuing on with our star ratings for Scott Fishbowl teams. So before we get into it, uh, like always, please subscribe and like and do all the algorithm stuff because it really helps the channel. Uh, if you guys have questions or stuff you want to see on the show, you can always hit me up social media at Jack Lucene or send it to worst sports channel at gmail.com. Uh, but I remember this time we're going to put up the scoring first to remind us of the Scott Fishbowl scoring and rules. So again, Six points per touchdown, two points per two-point conversion for the quarterbacks. Uh, only one point for 50 passing yards. Uh, the rushing and receiving, one point for 10 yards, 0.5 per first down, and 0.25 per rush attempt. Again, those pass-catching running backs are going to be getting you extra first downs and therefore extra points, plus you get the extra points on all their rush attempts. And if Obviously, you get another half point uh, for their receptions. And then wide receiver, it's full point PPR. Tight end, it's one and a half PPR. And the tight end gets an extra one point per first down. So there's extra juice on those tight ends. Kicking, 3.3 points per uh, made extra point And 0.1 points per field goal yard. Uh, and then on special teams, you have the 10 point per return touchdown and 1.45 yards per return. So that's now I get what it meant last time. Point two. So it is 0. 0.2 points per return yard. So that actually could weigh heavier than I originally thought. Now that I'm kind of looking at that, I still think though the the gap between the pure return guys and the guys who actually have receiving roles and are also returning plus the rule changes we could potentially just see completely different people in those roles but we shall see how that shakes out um again a reminder that we are doing a star rating system based on good old uncle Dave Meltzer. If you're not a professional wrestling fan, he is kind of the godfather of wrestling journalism. If you want to call it that uh, he is the uh, creator and uh, head of wrestling observer newsletter. He's been doing uh, it for decades. He releases his star ratings based on the pay-per-views uh, now, we, we borrowed from it, but we simplified. We are sticking to five stars is the absolute max and um, half a star being the lowest. Five stars is the max. I didn't know that. Yeah. Let's see how many stars my maniacal ass got. Wow. Well, ha ha half a star, that's got to be a mistake. Ch check it again. Check it again. You're about as maniacal as a box full of kittens. Come on, that's not funny, man. I'm, I'm going to have to stab somebody or something and get my rep up. Why don't we have a maniacal pillow fight tonight? I could get it up, so. So we'll get right into it. We left off last time at at PJ Hofer 07. Shout out to you. Uh, drafting from the 111. And starting with Brees Hall, which I super love. Uh, I have Brees Hall ranked as my third running back basically this year that I really, really want. Uh, but like if I don't get Christian McCaffrey or Bijan Robinson, I am just as happy if I land Bre uh, Brees Hall, especially in a format like this. Uh, we follow it up with Kyler Murray and Trey McBride, beautiful stack there, and I love the value. We get jo I'm kind of lukewarm on Josh Jacobs this year, I'm not really sure how that's going to work out. Um, it could end up being a three-headed monster uh, if they're still trying to involve A.J. Dillon nonsensically in the offense. But even if it's split between Josh Jacobs and Marshawn Lloyd, kind of makes me nervous because Aaron Jones really led the way on efficiency, whereas Josh Jacobs needs all the work. 
So I, I still think he will have a good season. And I think in this format, he's an underrated pass catcher out of the backfield. I think he can return on value in this format because I do see them using Josh Jacobs uh, when they're in short distance or needing that first down, whether it is uh, just trying to pound it out or leak out of the backfield to get that quick first down. I think Jacobs could have a good role on this offense. Uh, David Njoku, I love as a second tight end. I do feel you could have gone a little heavier on the tight ends and running backs because now we go Devonta Smith, Amari Cooper, and Brian Robinson. I do like that you stacked Amari Cooper with Deshaun Watson, who if he's able to take that step forward. Now, the thing is, you know, with Deshaun Watson and the history he's had the last couple of years, and we'll get it to it later, you took a, a guy from Cleveland at your 2102 in Deontay Foreman. There's a different guy from Cleveland I think you could have taken there just to really lock this spot up. DeAndre Hopkins, Xavier Gibson, uh I'm starting to understand why people are uh, really trying to hone in on Xavier Gibson and potentially, but again, I, I feel like it could wash out like a regular wide receiver could have the, like Tyler Lockett could have the same value as a guy who gets, you know, a thousand return years. Cause it's, I, I think that's an underrated aspect of the rule changes too. It's like potentially, we could see a situation where it's like, because historically, I mean, just historically speaking, um, like you were kicking off and you were taking it out of the back of the end zone, basically sometimes. Right. And so it's like, you could get 25 yards, 30 yards, and just be at the 25, 30 yard line. Does that aspect of the return game kind of go away? Because, yeah, you're getting like that lead up to where guys aren't just coming straight for you. I don't know. It's going to be weird to see how it affects the overall yardage. I think the overall yardage comes down a bit. The touchdowns go up a bit. But I also think that the roles get mixed and that you see kind of teams experiment with different guys in that role as opposed to just using the traditional return man, because it's kind of a different skill set. If you think about it, like the whole, the whole thing with the return man is, you know, they spend so much time practicing receiving that, that kick from high up. Like it's uh, there's this kind of a special way you have to like track and catch that ball. And that's why, you know, certain return men have, that job locked in. If that aspect goes away where it's like, they're essentially just catching a pass. Like you could just throw a running back in there. And why wouldn't you like, you know, potentially, <laughs> I mean, we're looking at the jets just as an example. Like what if the jets decide, well, you know, we actually have two running backs that we drafted that if they get downhill uh, in Braylon Allen, but also in Isaiah Davis, like potentially, those guys could be really good in the return game. So it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Uh, Zeke, Cordero Patterson. See, Cordero Patterson, historically always a great returner anyways. I think with his body and skill set, he's the kind of guy that could take advantage of the new rules, but we'll see. I like the Jalen Wright pick for upside. And then kind of just rounding out the wide receivers with Brandon Cooks, Adonai Mitchell, Jalen Polk. I really like the Jalen Polk pick. I like his upside as a rookie. And Wandale Robinson, I like him to come back. Kaimi Fairburn, I love that. Zay Jones, the ultimate spot starter. Though I think uh, he's r running with the backups currently um, in Arizona, which tells me I think Michael Wilson might be able to maybe take a step forward. So th this pick here is Zay Jones or Deontay Foreman. I would have gone with Jameis Winston just to lock up your Deshaun Watson pick. Make sure that you weren't messing around with any potential injuries. Uh, but yeah, I, I, there isn't really too much I can say. There are, 
I, I think the running backs outside of Brees could have been ha- uh, a little stronger. I think you could have got a couple extra tight ends. But honestly, I really like this build. I would actually say, mm, again, I'm sorry. I feel like you are a victim of going first. We're going four stars. I think four stars is very good, though. You know, um, if a couple couple other things swinging uh, more in the direction of just guys that I prefer, um, I think you could have gone a little bit higher. But we're going with four stars. Four stars is a good start. All right, let's go. Let's go because we got a lot of these. At Big Daddy Drix, my man. Starting with Kyler Murray, Amon Ross St. Brown, solid as a rock. Puka Nakua, Isaiah Pacheco, I love it. Brock Bowers scares me, but I did that too, so I can't blame you there. Cooper Cup, T. Higgins. Okay. T. Higgins is the most overvalued and overdrafted wide receiver in all of fantasy football. So it's not that I, you know, I'm not, I'm sorry to have to hate on your pick here, but T. Higgins is just like spectacularly mid. Like he's always going to miss games. And when I say miss games, that doesn't always mean by injury. It means there are games where he will just be faded and end up with three for 30. Him and Chase kind of seem to trade off as opposed to always going off together. Maybe, you know, miraculously, this is the season, you know, Slim Shady Burrow out here uh, throws 5,050 and can support two wide receiver ones in the offense, but it usually doesn't work out that way. And I think T. Higgins is capped at his usual, assuming everything goes right this season, I think he hits like, a thousand yards and seven, eight touchdowns. I think that's just exactly what he is in this offense. They have a talented rookie that they brought in in Jermaine Burton, but Andre Yoshivas is really underrated also. Um, Burrow spreads the ball around. I do think they're going to throw a lot more because of the running back situation, but I just really hate T Higgins and he just costs so much. Like I really think, Adam Thielen and Josh Palmer have almost just as much of a chance. They're going to finish like pretty close to T Higgins and they could literally finish with the basically same stat line. Um, Like I know T Higgins is a better player than Josh Palmer and Adam Thielen in real life NFL football, but I'm talking strictly for fantasy here, uh, but we're getting, it's getting away from us. Let's go back to your Geno Smith pick. Okay. I, I'm not the biggest Geno guy, but I do like that offense, and they should throw a little bit more. I think, again, instead of taking the shot on Clyde Edwards-Alaire in the fifth-year breakout as the backup, uh, and you know, I see the correlation between Pacheco and CEH. I It's just if you're going to cover a guy, <coughs> I think Pacheco – is not the guy I would have been looking to cover. I would have been looking to cover Gina. So I probably would have taken like Sam Howell with one of my last two picks there. Um, I also would have tried to get Jalen Wright to cover the Raheem Mostert pick. I do like Mostert at that value, but kind of where you took Jaleel McLaughlin again, court, that's where I would have maybe taken a correlating piece instead. The tight ends, the problem with your tight ends that I really struggle with is when you take a rookie tight end in Brock Bowers, like I feel like you need to get a veteran guy to kind of back him up. Like, you know, a a Hunter Henry or, you know, or like a a potential second year breakout and like a, a Musgrave or something. And the problem with Isaiah likely, and I get it with likely, he just, He's capped for sure, no matter what, obviously, by Mark Andrews' presence. And you're ba- you're banking on injury, essentially, for him to be viable. And it's like, I think the problem with that is you're banking on something that's going to potentially happen in the future, which is the same thing with Brock Bowers. Like, unless Brock Bowers comes out and dominates week one, he might have a better second half of the season than first half of the season. So that's just kind of where I look at like how I would set up my correlating pieces of like, you know, I, again, I, 
I took Brock Bowers, but then I also took Hunter Henry to balance that out. And then at the very end of the draft, like I just peppered tight ends. I took Jatavian Sanders, uh, another rookie, but then I took Daniel Bellinger, who I think could land that starting role for the Giants. And I took Tucker Craft, who's on Pup uh, right now. But, uh, you know, again, him and Musgrave kind of traded off last year. So, but it's really like I look at Hunter Henry and he's the type of veteran presence that could have a strong start to the year, potentially with Jacoby Brissett or a rookie quarterback that counterbalances Brock Bowers if he doesn't you know, start the the league on fire. And if it takes him a couple weeks to be relevant, like really relevant, then again, it's like, well, I've got Hunter Henry for what I perceive as like maybe the first six weeks. And then he kind of has a potential fall off the way Adam Thielen did last year. And you counteract that with the hot rookie pick of Brock Bowers where it's like okay maybe Brock Bowers his first six weeks are good but not great but but then by the time he's acclimated to the offense and finds his groove maybe that second half of the year is really spitting hot fire so that's kind of my one qualm with your tight end room and John U. Smith is a journeyman I like him he has some minor upside but the tight end position in the in the Dolphins room is very much an afterthought. He's been brought in for what he can do in the blocking game first and, you know, the receiving game second Uh, as like a, honestly, I I view him as like the, the fifth or sixth look where it's like, you know, do I have Tyreek? Do I have Jalen Waddle? Do I have Malik Washington? Do I have one of my running backs? And then do I have Janu? Like he's very much to me the afterthought and the last thought in that offense. Um, but rounding out with Josh Palmer, Adam Thielen, I don't like Julio McLaughlin. I, I just don't think he takes that role from Javonta Williams. And so he's capped in my eyes. Deonta Foreman, I feel like, again, you know, Jerome Ford is there. And it, as if um, Nick Chubb actually is able to start the season. I view Nick Chubb kind of similarly to how I viewed Javonta Williams last year, and people take that as a slight, but I'm like, look, if Nick Chubb plays at all, it's a miracle, and I think he could play at 80 to 90% capacity, and he's going to get enough touches that, that it makes Deontay Foreman irrelevant and probably ends up on waivers. Sanders is a really underrated place kicker. I love that pick. Alexander Madison. Ha ha ha. But I like it because he's the backup again. So maybe he actually has value. CEH, we talked about, kind of covers Pacheco, but I just feel like there were other guys more prescient to cover on your team. Like you took Gino and Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones might not even be ready for the beginning of the year. So I would have much rather have taken like Drew Locke here to cover Daniel Jones or take Sam Howell in case Gino gets hurt. Like just kind of looking at it that way. Um, And I do really like DJ Chark, though, as an underrated last round pick here. Uh, He is uh, running with the starters right now. So we're going three and a half stars on this build because there are a lot of things I like. I do like your wide receivers. Uh, I know you took both of the Rams, but I'm not afraid of that. It's a high powered offense and they could both have a lot of value. But where I really, like I said, have the qualms is kind of the running backs after like Pacheco, Mostert and Zeke. Zeke is gross value. I get it. But after that is a drop off to me. And I think you could have got some guys to really cover like your quarterback room, maybe a couple extra wide receivers late. Um, But I love the, I love the beginning. I love the first five. I'm going to say first six picks. Uh, Obviously, talking about how I'm not a fan of T. Higgins either. All right. Moving right along. Let's go down to at McBreeze11 from the 112. So, retrospectively, if I could have uh, picked a different draft position for myself this year, I actually would have gone from the 112. So, it's interesting to see what this build will look like. Um, but I think we may have gone different path though. I, I do like the correlation on this team that I see already. So starting off, 
uh, when Amon Ra, St. Brown, and Jamar Chase. I don't know what running backs would have been available there, but if it was Jameer Gibbs and Saquon Barkley, I guarantee you I would have done that instead. Uh, I understand the appeal of the wide receivers. I get it. I personally would have taken the running backs because of the drop-off at running back and how they can perform compared to the mean, especially those pass-catching running backs that can break fantasy. Like You got some solid value later on. You didn't get any guys that are going to break fantasy to the point where they're you know cracking 400 fantasy points uh, and being like 200 points away from the average of their position. Uh, so that's my one qualm. And again, it's hard. I know it's like, how does he have a qualm with Amon Ra and Jamar Chase? In this very specific format, I think I would have preferred the running backs or at least one of. Like if you want to take Amon Ra or take Jamar Chase and then take either, you know, your, your next favorite running back, whether that was Gibbs or Saquon or even Jonathan Taylor, uh, probably on the board here, th- that would have been my preference, but. I don't, I can't hate on it too much. It's on and around Jamar Chase. Uh, Jaden Daniels in this format, huge upside, huge uh, potential to uh, break the format uh, because of the rushing ability. Jake Ferguson, I love Jake Ferguson. I am a known Jake Ferguson truther. Nico Collins, maybe it's because I traded him in Dynasty that I just am a, not a Nico truther, uh, but I feel like. Again, there's just when there's so many mouths to feed on that offense. Like I don't perceive, I don't think CJ Stroud's walking into a 5,000 yard season and 40, 50 touchdowns. There are people projecting it. I, I think that's kind of unreasonable. I have them at around like 4,000 yards and like 30 touchdowns, which is great, but it's not enough where all of these guys are going to finish with 1,510. You know what I mean? So someone's going to have to take a little bit of a backseat. I actually think Tank Dell is the one that kind of gets relegated to the the lesser role and gets used a little bit more sparingly because of his size, trying to protect him. Uh, so I I do view Stephon Diggs stepping into that kind of wide receiver one role, ne- pushing Nico Collins to the other outside role against the second cornerback, which I think he can take advantage of. So I think he'll have a nice season. I don't hate him uh, here, and I like him as a wide receiver three which is where he belongs. If The thing is, if you're five, fifth round is still pretty high, I, but if you're drafting him as your wide receiver three, I don't hate it. And then coming back with James Conner and Najee Harris and Zeke, that's good value. Terry McLaurin, I like to stack with Jaden Daniels. So you have a strong wide receiver room. You get Geno in the ninth. Luke Musgrave, I already said earlier, uh, I like him. And Hunter Henry, I like too. Dontavian Wicks has some upside. Damian Pierce at 12 12. I don't I don't know what that is. I I literally I don't know if you lost a bet. I know there's a lot of like weird stuff going on in uh Scott Fish where it's like people auction off certain picks or blah blah blah. Uh, because it is for charity, I get it. But I look at the 12 12 and I see Damian Pierce, and my first thought is what in the fuck? So what in the fuck? Like I, that one, I, I'm sorry. I just, I don't get that pick at all. Um, even if you're telling me like, oh, I think he's going to be like the return. Okay. I still wouldn't take him at 12. Um, Sam Darnold, uh, probably starting the season. It sounds like, so I understand that pick. Um, Jermaine Burton. I think people are really enamored with Burton, but are going to be disappointed when it turns out to be Andre Yoshivas in that role. Uh, Kevante Turpin, I think is being overdrafted in this format because of the return stuff. He might not even end up having the role if it turns out they're changing it that much. So that Trey Sermon here, again, don't get that at all. Even if you're coming and back to me and saying, well, Jack, Jack, those guys are going to be maybe on the return. Bro, I don't care how many returns Trey Sermon is doing. He sucks. (laughs) Like, I just, I don't. And when I say he sucks, I'm saying that very much relative compared to the rest of the NFL and not compared to average human beings because obviously Trey Sermon is like a superhuman athlete uh, compared to like the rest of us. 
but obviously he's never done anything in the NFL. I don't think he's suddenly stepping into like a huge kick returning role just because they changed the rules. Like it doesn't, I don't, I don't understand how you're making that leap in logic to where you're drafting him over. There were definitely still relevant wide receivers. And even, you know, if you want to take your shot on deep running backs here, like I just, I'm so out on the, I don't understand it. Honestly, you'd have to, come on here and kind of explain yourself, but I can, I can tell you those are going to ding you. I'm sorry. Rashad Bateman, not a believer. Javon Baker. I love Javon Baker though. All about that base at the kicker spot. And you did pair Howell with Geno Smith in your last pick. I do really like that. I like that you locked down this uh, Seattle quarterback room. I got to give you, Oh, uh, there are things I like about this, but I got to ding you. I got to ding you. I'm sorry for Damian Pierce and Trey Sermon alone. I got to ding you. Uh, we're going to go three star, three star build here. I like Amon Ra. I, like I said, I would have taken a running back um, instead of one of those wide receivers, but I can't argue with it too much. Love Jake Ferguson. Love Jaden Daniels. We talked about Nico. I'm okay with that. I, honestly, your draft is great. The first half from from like 112 to 11 was on the path to a five-star draft, okay? So maybe I'm being harsh. You know what? We're going to give you an extra half star. There you go. There's your half star. Sorry. Three and a half stars, McBreeze 11. Um, but here's where you lose me. Damian Pierce at the 12. Uh, and then Jermaine Burton, Cavante Turpin, Trey Sermon, Rashad Bateman. All of those guys I feel like are going to end up on waivers. But, yeah, oh, man, I, I do like so much of your draft, though. No, we're going th three and a half. Final decision. Three and a half stars. All right, let's move on. Man, you know what? That would have been like four and a half, almost five stars. Ugh. All right. At Josh Reedy five from the one Oh eight. My lucky number CD lamb. Okay. Uh, he did stack it with Dak Prescott. I like that gets Sam Laporta in the second. I kind of, I'm liking this build already. Um, I'm liking that you got CD Dak stack with Jake Ferguson in the fifth Rashad white at the fourth. I'm not a big believer in Rashad white, but he is a pass catching running back. That has extra value in this format, so I don't hate that. Uh, love Sam Laporta, Jake Ferguson as a tight end room already. And then we get down to Deshaun Watson. A little bit of a reach. Uh, I would have preferred him a little bit lower, but it just depends on how your room is going, how much you believe in him. I understand that. Uh, James Conner, TJ Hawkinson. So Hawkinson... Not going to be available probably for the beginning of the season. Uh, I would assume he comes along a little bit later. I like that he's your tight end three in this format because when he is going to be available, I think he will be extremely valuable uh, in this format. And so you'll be able to have potentially three, maybe even four tight ends in your flex. So that's very valuable. Uh, Zach Moss, I'm not in on Zach Moss. That's To me, that's this year's Alexander Madison. Javante Williams, I do like him for the bounce back. Drake May, I, I don't hate the Drake May pick, but I also don't love it, again, in this format where you're rewarded specifically for touchdowns and you're, the yardage is nerfed. I think I would have just gone with a different quarterback altogether or just punted the second quarterback. And maybe just taking Jameis Winston instead uh, with one of my last picks. Uh, and then Tyler, Con I'm not in on Tyler Conklin. Like, there's Aaron Rodgers. First of all, Aaron Rodgers in like his 20th year, assuming that he's just going to last the entire season, I think is foolhardy already. But he's just never really used a tight end since like Jermichael Finley, that was like actually fantasy relevant. Like th they'll have a couple spike weeks, but it's just not really his game to hyper target the tight end position. So I'm not in on Tyler Conklin, but he's your fourth tight end and any tight end in this format is valuable. So I don't hate it. Xavier Gibson, Cavante Turpin. We've talked about them. 
they're popping up a lot in these builds, and I think they are going to end up being guys that I don't think they differentiate because I'm seeing so many builds with Xavier Gibson and Cavante Turpin. And I think, honestly, there's going to be guys that come off waivers that are just as, if not more, valuable than those guys. And you draft them pretty highly to where I feel like, you know, some people are going to be wanting to hold on to them um, a little longer than they should maybe even. But we'll see how that all works out. Darius Davis, Jawan Johnson, also dealing with a foot injury, probably not available for the beginning of the season. Trey Tucker, Braxton Berrios. Man, this is just falling off a cliff. Devin Duvernay, Nate Nguyen, Luis Rezimit, Sion in fact. This is what I'm talking And where you lose me is this second half of the draft with all these return guys. Cause I'm just, every time I look at it, I'm like, I was getting Malik Washington in that range, who I think could be just as viable as all of these return guys. And maybe more so because he has a potential path to like a receiving role. You know, I took Roman Wilson to me, clear path to a receiving role with the Steelers. Um, and Steelers always hit on wide receivers. So there, there's just other guys that I still like in this range. Um, you know, the Colby Parkinson's of the world uh, went in that range. Um, you got guys like Gabe Davis and Adam Thielen who are like actual wide receivers uh, going in that range. Uh, val- valuable quarterbacks that I think, uh, you know, people should be using to cover um you know, like for the Drake May pick, like you could have covered that with Jacoby Brissett. People taking Deshaun Watson, which was also you, you could have covered that with Jameis Winston. So I think this is another case where uh, maybe we just have to agree to disagree. But for me, this one is another three and a half stars. Really love the beginning, but we really tail off at the end. Apologies if uh, we were having some technical difficulties there. I think I fixed it, uh, but we'll see. So if it happens again, uh, we'll try and hit a drop or something. Uh, All right, let's get into at Mr. Aladdin 23 from the 108. And he took my absolute favorite slam dunk pick this year, Bijan Robinson. Do you want to see me dunk? Sure. Yeah? Okay. Are you guys ready? I'm I'm okay. Don't worry. Does that always happen? So this is, I love this because you got Bijan Robinson and then to get Jamar Chase uh, in the second and somehow have AJ Brown fall to you at three, that is an absolutely insane start. And then you get Jake Ferguson and then you get Justin Herbert. Like this isn't even fair. DK Metcalf is your wide receiver of three. What? Matthew Stafford. Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Nick Chubb. I love that you paired Nick Chubb with Jerome Ford, who you got a couple picks later. So you get the two best running backs in the Cleveland room as your uh, second running back. Russell Wilson as your quarterback three. I like that. We get Josh Downs with them upside. We get Tyrone Tracy, Curtis Samuel. I like both of those picks. Tyler Algier, again, backing up Bijan Robinson. That's some good correlation. Jake Moody uh, at the kicking spot. I like that. Jawan Johnson and Jonu Smith. So Jawan, again, dealing with injuries. Not really in on Jonu Smith, but we're peppering in some extra tight ends. Naheem Hines, uh, also a backup in Cleveland. And I get it. Um, that's potentially a kick returner role. And same thing with Anthony Gold. So it's like you took some shots on some potential kick returns, but you only took a couple of those guys and you took them very late in the draft. 
and also getting Jelani Woods uh, some upside at tight end potentially for that Indianapolis Colts team. I love this build. This is my favorite one that I've seen today. Uh, little light on the running backs. I would have preferred going a little heavier on the running backs. I mean, by the time you got to Deontay Johnson, you didn't really need to take any more wide receivers when you had a four pack of Chase, Brown, Metcalf, and Godwin. But I, I don't hate the pick. I just, I would have preferred somebody else there. Maybe a couple X running backs. I think running back though, you'll be able to target on waivers. This is about as good as it gets. Like, I'm. I feel like I'm really being nitpicky. We're going five stars. This is this is a five star frog splash build. Oh hell yes, yes it is. I'm going five stars. I mean, look, the fact that you got Bijan, Jamar Chase, and AJ Brown, that's ridiculous. The fact that they let AJ Brown fall to three oh five in this draft, like, what were they doing in the Goonies division? My God. All right. Go to King, at King Showtime 44, another Bijan Robinson build from the 106. You were braver than I was, my friend. I should have gone Bijan Robinson at 106, but I was a coward. Mahomes fell to me, and so Bijan, I had to let him slip through my fingers. Go fuck yourself. But Bijan is my favorite uh, first round pick in this format, uh, aside from CMC. Um, and obviously, like there's there's three quarterbacks that I had uh, in Superflex, kind of just ahead of everyone because you're forced to almost. Uh, but that was, and it wasn't the names you're probably thinking of. It was uh, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, and Patrick Mahomes. And you're like, but Jack, Jack, what about Josh Allen? Josh Allen. Is not going to finish as a top five fantasy quarterback this year. You can book it. I, unless I will say, barring if they trade for Brandon Ayuk, okay, fine, he'll he'll finish top five. If they if they keep the team as is right now going into the season, he does not finish top five. You can book it. I said it right here. All right. Um. Then we come back, Kyler Murray and MHJ. I'm not really in on the rookie, but I get it. Uh, and stacking with Kyler, I love that. Getting Justin Herbert in the fourth, I like that. Mike Evans, Alvin Kamara is going to have value. George Pickens, Christian Kirk. Alvin Kamara, especially in this format with the receiving and uh, potentially first downs, going to be huge. Uh, Pickens and Christian Kirk, I like that. So you have a solid four-pack of wide receivers to start. I'm not super in on Zach Moss, but I get the pick. But to me, that's Alexander Madison. I think my only qualm right now is that your first tight end off the board is Luke Musgrave. I think you could have got a better tight end maybe at the Christian Kirk spot. I don't know who would have been available. Maybe like the Muth or something. I don't know. I don't hate Musgrave, but as my tight end one in this specific format, I would be less confident. Uh, you get Jerome Ford. I like that. Romeo Dobbs, Rico Dowdle. All right. That's not bad. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, I, to me, I feel like that's a wasted pick. Uh, and the reason is just that at that 14 spot, there was still a lot of value on the board. And I just don't see a world where J.J. McCarthy comes out his rookie season and throws a bunch of touchdowns. Like he would, in this format, passing yards aren't going to get you there. He's not really a rushing quarterback. So it's like you would, you would have to basically say, I think J.J. McCarthy is rookie season is going to throw 30-plus touchdowns, and that's just not very realistic. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd, solid value pick there. Jahan Dotson, Noah Fan. I like the Colby Parkinson pick. That does help the tight end room a little bit. Uh, getting Trey Tucker late here, Sam Howell. And the, the dark shot on Miles Sanders, I'm not going to lie. I was doing that a little bit earlier. I don't know if I'm still doing it. I think the problem is Chuba Hubbard is just as good as Miles Sanders, maybe even technically a little bit better for that offense. But we'll see. I mean, worst case, he's your last pick. You end up just dropping him. This is a really solid build. I wish he had some stronger tight ends in the room. We're going to go four stars. Four star build here. I like it. All right, let's keep it moving, keep it grooving. 
at T Bills Double A. Patrick Mahomes and Kyler Murray off the board first. Strong, strong quarterback room. I like that. Somehow Jameer Gibbs falling to 308. Very in on Jameer Gibbs in this format. Love that pick. Devontae Adams. I think Adams kind of being overlooked. I think he's still going to be a solid wide receiver. And then you come back with George Kittle and Jake Ferguson. I love that for your tight end room. Kittle with Purdy is really solid. And I think Jake Ferguson can take another step this year. Uh, I love the Rashid Shahid pick, especially because Rashid Shahid is a guy I view as the wide receiver too on his team, but also with that return upside. I think he could have a really monster season in this format. Uh, Tony Pollard, Devin Singletary, Jalen Warren, Trey Benson. I like that four pack. You get the upside of Trey Benson, the potential pass catching ability of Jalen Warren, though I do think it will be tempered by Arthur Smith's style of offense. They are returning to a power run formation and style, I think, in Pittsburgh. Uh, Devin Singletary, though, really good value there. Tony Pollard, I love. And then these wide receivers, if you're going to take Devontae Adams and Rashid Shaheed, I love this kind of shotgun approach of the wide receivers late. This is what I was saying about getting your running backs out of the way because now look at your wide receivers. Marvin Mims, Romeo Dobbs, Brandon Cooks, Greg Dorch, Roman Wilson, and then Khalif Raymond has some return upside and and also deep bomb upside. And then Darius Slayton as a last round pick. I love that. And then coming in with Conklin, John o. Smith, and Hayden Hurst. I'm not, I don't believe in any of those players, but if any one of them hit kind of moderately, great. That makes you tight end three, and the rest can just go to waivers and give you a little bit of flexibility on the roster. Ooh, you know what? I think, and again, I think most people would not agree with me here. This, I love this build, though. You know what? We're going with four and a half stars. Strong, strong build here. We've got amazing quarterbacks, amazing tight ends. We have an excellent RB1 and a really solid four pack of running backs. And we still ended up with, like, I think a really solid, underrated wide receiver room here uh, in Devontae Adams, Rashid Shahid. Mims, Dobbs, Cooks, Dorch, Roman Wilson, like all of those guys I feel like are going to have spot start value. So, and you only need one wide receiver in this format. Again, he can have Gibbs, Pollard, Singletary, Kittle, and Ferguson kind of filling up all those flex spots. And then you have Devontae Adams and Rashid Shahid as your main starters. And then you're just peppering in the other guys as needed. So that's why I really love this style of build. So shout out to you, uh, T Bills Double A. All right, we will take a short break here. I will be right back after this thirty-second dance party. Thirty-second dance party. <laughs> And we're back. Not that we went anywhere. So we move on to at Sam Snack Rig from the 107 going double up, uh, uh, double up at the quarterback and tight end with the first four picks. I like this strategy. Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, Dalton Kincaid, and Kyle Pitts. Solid selections. You're running back. Rashad White, the only running back you took for a hot minute, followed up by Cooper Cup, Devonta Smith, Jaden Reed, Deontay Johnson, and DeAndre Hopkins. So really solid five-pack of wide receivers there. Luke Musgrave at the 11.06. I like that as your third tight end. 
uh, and then getting Blake Corum and Marshawn Lloyd, some high upside rookie running backs. Sam Darnold as a third quarterback at 14. Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller already dealing with injuries, probably not going to be relevant. Isaiah Likely. Now this, I don't understand the Isaiah Likely pick here because if you had taken Mark Andrews instead of Dalton Kincaid, that would make a lot of sense. Taking somebody else's backup that's only relevant, really. I just don't see a path for real, for real, where Isaiah Likely is like super relevant in like a two tight end set. Like this is not Gronkowski and Hernandez, unfortunately. Um, rest in peace. Uh, from back in the day, like this is to me is I would have just gone elsewhere and especially like Roshan Johnson and then Boston Scott. I kind of find Boston Scott is an especially confusing pick. I, like that's another one where I'm just like, Ooh. there's supposed to be a sound drop that failed epically. What in the fuck? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, so yeah, that, I don't understand that pick, but we round out with uh, Wandale Robinson, DeAndre Carter, Braxton Berrios, and Jake Bates. Uh, four stars. Nice four-star build. I really liked uh, until we got to Isaiah Likely, and then I got very confused by Boston Scott. So we lost a star on Likely and Scott. Um, all right. Let's kind of smash through a couple of these. My guy. Big Bounded, FFB. We just had him on Worst Interview. That should be coming out very soon. Um, so Anthony Richardson at the 107. Uh, I know people are really in on Anthony Richardson this year. I am not one of those people. Uh, but I'm not going to hate on the pick at 107 because he went way earlier in my league. Uh, or in my division, I should say. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown at 206. Love that. Evan Ingram. Very underrated Evan Ingram still this year. I mean, he's basically the number one target now uh, that they lost Calvin Ridley. And I get that they still have Christian Kirk, but I, I think it's like Evan Ingram is the primary target. You saw how they targeted him last year and how he almost uh, threatened the reception record for tight ends. And in this format, again, he's so good at getting that those first downs which are going to be mad points. So, uh, And then you stack it with Trevor Lawrence for the bounce back. Rashad White, Ramondre Stevenson, Zamir White, some pretty solid middling running backs there, though I I also have Ramondre. I think he could have a surprisingly good season. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, the Hawk. Now I wish you had Tua as your second quarterback so that we can make a Hawk Tua joke here. But uh, Deontay Johnson, Marvin Mims, a little high for Mims. I get it, but I, I guess we'll see if he's able to really take over um, the like an actual receiving role on top of a return role. Christian Watson for a bounce back. I do like that. Drake May as a third quarterback. I don't mind that. I do think... I don't know if they're going to start with Jacoby Brissett right away, but I, I have a sneaky feeling they will because of the type of team they are. I think they're going to want to go with a veteran presence. Uh, and, you know, Jacoby historically uh, drafted by the Patriots. So I think the organization likes him a lot. So we'll we'll see how long it takes Drake May to actually take those starting reins. Um, but I don't hate it as a third quarterback. I, I kind of wish your Trey Lance pick down here was skipping ahead to the 21st spot. I, I wish that was Jacoby Brissett instead, just to lock down that. Uh, but I don't – I I know Jerry Jones is talking some gobbledygook about Trey Lance. I don't even listen to Jerry anymore. Jerry at this point – Jerry Jones at this point is like late-stage Vince McMahon where he thinks he's running shit, but actually like – Shit's getting run in spite of him. Uh, and I think they're kind of getting sick of Jerry Jones's shit. Uh, I think in the coming years, like we're going to see the, the official torch and baton pass down to uh, his son, Steven. And I don't think Trey Lance is the thing. I just don't. Uh, so I'm out on that, but let's go back up to your 13th pick, Josh Downs. You get Pop Douglas at 14, Trey Tucker at 15. Uh, I love the Colby Parkinson pick, uh, kind of 
buffs that second tight end spot till you get TJ Hawkinson back in full. I like Roshan Johnson's upside, uh, Jelani Woods. Uh, Will Shipley, I think, is irrelevant because I just – Barring uh, an injury to Saquon, who I don't view as like an injury prone guy, um, like I just don't see a, a world where Will Shipley has kind of the ability. He's also got to pass Ken Gainwell, and I just don't ever really see a path where he is like, I, unless he ends up taking the return role, but like I don't see a path for him to be like a, a relevant running back. However, with Dylan Laube. I actually love the Dylan Laube pick for two reasons. One, you took Zamir White. Uh, if for some reason Zamir White were to go down or whatever, whatever, I think Dylan Laube will split the role with Madison, but he has the clear pass catching role and ability. He has been comped to Danny Woodhead. I do view him as a similar type of player. I think he's better than Danny Woodhead, though. Um, and I love Malik Washington as your last pick. I think Malik Washington actually has huge upside, not just as a potential return guy, but also potentially as a wide receiver. You know, if Tyreek or Jalen Waddle get hurt, that's one thing. I think he has the potential to kind of take over that slot position where you have a three wide receiver set of Tyreek, Jalen Waddle and Malik Washington. And then you have Devon Ashane in the backfield with, or Raheem Moser, like, pick your poison. Who the hell are you going to stop? Uh, so I think Malik Washington, very underrated. I love that pick. Uh, uh, I'm teetering a little bit. I just feel like you're – I'm not enamored with, like, all the – like, I know you locked in the first four spots, and, again, it's all flex after that. But I just, I personally just think I would have made different picks of like the running backs and the wide receivers. Like I just, I'm not huge on Deontay Johnson being the wide, your wide receiver too, for example. I'm not huge on the idea of like Rashad White as your running back one. I do like Ramondre Stevenson and Zamir White and combined with Dylan Laube, but it's pretty thin after that because I don't think Will Shipley factors in and Roshan is in a very, like that's a room that I have just completely avoided this year because that's a true three-headed monster in my opinion. Where DeAndre Swift, Khalil Herbert, and Roshan Johnson are all good but not great running backs, so I don't see any one of them standing out really that far ahead above the other. And I think they just all eat into each other's role unless one of them gets hurt, and that's that's one I've just completely just had my hands off of, especially when you look at. Oh, they've also got a crowded wide receiver room and a rookie quarterback they want to use. I don't know how much they're actually going to be leaning just on running the ball, but we'll see. I think this is a really solid four stars, though. Still going. I'm a little biased uh, towards my guy Biggs, but uh, I I think with maybe some stronger second wide receivers – I don't know. It's hard to say because I, I would have had to see the board. But I think maybe you could have kind of gone a little more back and forth as opposed to going three straight running back there. You maybe could have gone like a running back, a wide receiver, a running back, a wide receiver, a running back, kind of mix it up a little bit more. I do feel like you got caught in a run of running backs and then caught in a run of wide receivers. And then again, another run of wide receivers. I mean, Christian... Like potentially Christian Watson ends up as your wide receiver two and Deontay is your three. But yeah, I just, there's other ways I think I would have gone, but I still think it's a strong, strong build. All right. At, at FF underscore med cabinet. Uh, 106, Jamar Chase. Two, uh, followed with Travis Kelsey. And then we get Brock Purdy, Justin Herbert, uh, quarterback. I uh, love that you paired George Kittle and Purdy together and got two really strong tight ends. And then we get Joe Mixon, I think, is underrated. Strong potential workhorse running back. I don't I don't see anybody else there that's going to eat into his role too much. Uh, you know, Damian Pierce, we saw what happened last year. Jawar Jordan, 
not the type of guy that's going to come in and take take work away really from Mixon. And then you get George Pickens. I love that. You get Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson. J.J. McCarthy, I would have gone with a different, again, just because he's a rookie and I don't see the upside for the touchdowns. Like, And especially because I think you could have got a correlating piece here with Russell Wilson. And then maybe take, uh, instead of Brian Robinson next, you take Justin Fields and you get that two-pack of uh, quarterback. And it's like if Russ doesn't play through the whole season, Fields takes over and Fields has massive upside as a potential rushing quarterback. I think that I would have liked that. And uh, not just as a Steelers fan, but just like as a strategy, as opposed to taking the rookie here, Khalil Shakir and Josh Palmer, I think both have a uh, good upside. Ty Chandler uh, will have a role. I love the Kamani Vidal pick. Love the Tyrone Tracy pick. I like Gabriel Davis. I think he's a bit underrated this year because of the instability, but he should have a locked in role as a wide receiver too. I like Dylan Laube. I love Javon Baker. I think Jalen Tolbert is a sneaky underrated pick. He could definitely have some upside and outperform that uh, wide receiver 91 spot. Uh, I like Tez Walker. I also took him as a late uh, deep sleeper, and I like Jake Bates. Uh, you know what? I really like this build. Uh, I really wish that McCarthy pick, I feel like, is the only flaw to me, really, truly. I want to give you five stars, but we can't. We can't do it. We're going four and a half stars. I'm nitpicky. I'm feeling nitpicky today. We're going four and a half stars, though. I super love this build. I love the premium tight ends. I love that you have Jamar Chase leading the wide receiver room. I love Joe Mixon. I love Kamani Vidal's upside. I think you have a pretty strong overall running back room, even if I'm not a huge believer in Brian Robinson. Uh, I'm struggling to find flaws on this team. I think, you know, you could have maybe peppered in another tight end or two towards the end of the draft for some uh, depth. But I think with Kelsey and Kittle, I mean, you're pretty solid. So, yeah, four and a half stars. All right, let's keep it moving, keep it grooving, because we're already almost an hour in. I don't know how many more of these I got left. Oh, man, we can barely see this one. Jesus Christ. Okay, who, who sent this in? Uh, RJ Murray 429. I My apologies, RJ Murray 429. We are skipping you for the sake of the video. Uh, audio people would appreciate the breakdown. Video people will not. I will send you yours uh, by DM. Uh, I'll, uh, so, yeah, sorry. We're going to skip that one. Um, where are we at now? Jesus. Okay. At FFB Phoenix, Phoenix will fly. Anthony Richardson, 107. This is from the 107. Anthony Richardson, I like that. Trey McBride, Kyle Pitts, premium. Brock Purdy, love it. Devon Shane, very interesting. I like that pick. Huge potential upside. Also very scary. You get Cooper Cup uh, as your... Wide receiver one, you get Najee Harris, Tank Dell, Jaden Reed, Jordan Addison. Addison obviously had the, the problem. Uh, we'll see if that affects his season. Uh, Tony Pollard. I like Tony Pollard's upside. You took the Justin Fields pick at 12.07. I love that. I love that. Because if Russ, anything happens to Russ, Fields in this format, and we saw it even uh, when he was with the Bears, he could really do some things. Uh, Chuba Hubbard. Antonio Gibson, some solid running back depth. Xavier Gibson, who I know people are very uh, in on for the return role. You get Tyler Algier, Wandale Robinson, Michael Wilson, Kane Nwangu, Jelani Woods, Javon Baker, and Luis Reese Zemeth. Um, I really like this build. I'm, am, I, am I doing? Yeah, I think this is our first. Five star build. Yeah, we did it. Thanks, Jamal. None this guy. None this guy. None this guy. Again, the way Scott Fish uh, scoring is set up, I love that you have two premium tight ends and a depth upside tight end in Jelani Woods. I love that you have two premium, uh, you have a 
rushing quarterback, premium rushing quarterback, potentially in Anthony Richardson. Even if I don't necessarily believe in him, I know I see that path to break fantasy because it's existed with Justin Fields, who you took as a quarterback three in the 12th, which I love. Uh, Brock Purdy solidifies the room for you, though, and you really only need one quarterback because it's a super flex. You could technically start anyone there. So Brock Purdy is a very solid uh, quarterback one to anchor the room. I love, again, upside on A-Shane, but then you get Har- Najee Harris and Tony Pollard to kind of anchor things. Um, I really like this build a lot. I like it a lot. Oh, you didn't even take a kicker, too. I think that's uh, that's sexy that you didn't take a kicker because you can just pick one up off waivers once waivers open up. And once you kind of get more information about your team, you know, generic Prince kind of the hot name in training camp right now. So maybe Reese Zamet finds his way into waivers. But yes, you are the first five stars of the day. The Phoenix rising. All right. At FF Ball Guru One. This is also from the Joker division. So shout out to you, my friend. We were drafting together. You from the 112, me from the uh i was drafting from 106 and uh yes so this is i kind of remember this now tyreek hill and travis kelsey go at 112 201 so already you sniped me on travis kelsey i was hoping that he would slide to 206 and i would potentially get that stack and since you didn't do that i ended up uh going aj brown and then Again, Jameer Gibbs was kind of floating, and I thought there was a chance he could get to me at 306. I would have taken him over two. I would have taken my second quarterback a little later, but you ended up taking Gibbs and forced, uh, kind of forced my hand. I thought there was going to be a quarterback run, and I took two a little earlier than I should have, uh, which kind of made me not like my draft as much. Chris Olave, I just, I get it, but I'm just, I'm not in on it. Uh, but as a second wide receiver, I'm fine. Debo Samuel, T. Higgins, I'm super out on T. Higgins. Stephon Diggs, I like. Chris Godwin. Uh, I think you waited a long time for your quarterbacks, and you got good value in Kirk Cousins and Russell Wilson, but then I, J.J. McCarthy, to me, I just would not have gone that route because of that. That was the Fields pick. I think you could have... Uh, either instead of Zeke, I would have just gone, I would have just doubled up on Russ and Fields there, uh, just to lock down that room. And you kind of did it later with Penix to, you know, in case of uh, Kirk's availability. So I think for having taken four quarterbacks, that's what I would have done instead. But I'm not going to ding you too hard for it. But the fact that Zeke is your running back two in this format, gross. You did pair him with Rico Dowdle, though. So I like that. Ty Chandler, he's going to have a role. I mean, Chico Conquo, I mean, that's the next uh, player that we're going to be waiting on the breakout year after year after year, and I just don't see it. He's got Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins and Tyler Boyd to compete with. Those are three pretty solid wide receivers. Will Levis would have to take a huge step forward. I don't really see the path. I do like uh, Tyler Lockett and Brandon Cooks. You have a really strong wide receiver room. Kind of weak on the running backs, though. Um, not my favorite style of build, but I'm not going to hate on it too much. We're still going to go four stars here. I think you have a really, really strong wide receiver base. I think Travis Kelsey and Jameer Gibbs give you good onesies because uh, it is quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and then all flex. So I like that. Um, I just I think J.J. McCarthy doesn't really fit this build. And I think your running back room definitely is going to need some work and attention over the season. So those are two big, big dings for me. All right. Um, at coin flip 22, Anthony Richardson fell all the way to 110. So you've gotten the most value from Richardson that I've seen so far. And then Sam Laporta and Trey McBride. Very sexy. And then Jared Goff, one of my favorite quarterbacks this year because he has an amazing opening schedule and like 12 dome games. So I really love that. You get Michael Pittman and Zay Flowers. That's solid. 
Uh, Kenneth Walker and Jonathan Brooks for running backs. Um, so I'm going a little out of order here. Let's go in order. 503, Michael Pittman, and then six, Zay Flowers, seven, Kenneth Walker, eight, Deontay Johnson, nine, Jonathan Brooks. In the 10th, you get Xavier Worthy, and then 11th, Jackson Smith and Jigba. So I like the upside there. Uh, quarterback, your quarterback three in Bo Nix is interesting. I think if, if I had gone that route, I think I would have taken, instead of Tyler Algier, I think Troy Franklin should have been there, and I would have taken him instead. But that's kind of a nitpicky thing. I love that you got Chuba Hubbard at 13 because Jonathan Brooks is not going to be available for the beginning of the season, but you have Chuba Hubbard who will be. Um, I think instead of Algier and Roshan, uh, if you had gone uh, Troy Franklin and if you had been able to land Zach Charbonnet with one of those picks, I think that would have been a much better uh, way. That would have been much better for your build. You know, Walker scares me a little bit, but if you had paired him with Charbonnet, I would have loved that instead of Algier there. But it's still a really good bill. Jermaine Burton and Braylon Allen have some upside. But I think Burton, again, I think it's actually going to be Andre Yoshivas in that role. And then rounding out at 18, Trey Tucker, 19, Jelani Woods, 20, Matt Gay, 21, Audric Estime. I like his upside. And then 22, uh, Kenny Nwangu with the potential return role. I really like this build a lot. Even though you faded running back a little bit, which I'm not a huge fan of, I think I'm being a little nitpicky with kind of prodding and poking that Tyler Algier Roshan pick. But if that had been Troy Franklin and Zach Charbonnet, this would be a five star build. I'm going to go four and a half stars. I am really in on the way you started with the double quarterback and the double tight end. And I think you put together a really nice stack with. Goff and Laporta and Anthony Richardson and Michael Pittman. I think you got really good value in your wide receiver room. So I really, really like this. I, I also see the correlation with Jelani Woods, where a lot of people were taking him as a sleeper unrelated. So I really like this. I like this a lot. Uh, all right. Uh, at will underscore I underscore am 505 from the 110. Ooh, I like this start. Brees Hall. And then we go Sam Laporta, Jaden Daniels, and Kyle Pitts. Drake London, and then Kirk Cousins. So uh, very, very heavy on the Falcons, but I, I don't hate it. And then we get George Pickens, Marquise Brown, and my guy, Lad McConkey. Everyone knows I'm a Lad McConkey truther. You get Fryermuth as a third tight end. I think that is really good. So you get Trey Benson and Zach Charbonnet at 11 and 12. And then you get Gardner Minshew, Minshew Mania. So with Minshew Mania, I would have wanted to see AOC also. But I think if you're just saying, I believe in Minshew, I get that. And you paired Cousins with Penix also. So you get that safety valve. Kendra Miller, yeah, but Kamani Vidal, yeah. Um, really like Kamani Vidal. I think he is definitely going to have uh, some good upside. Uh, and then, uh, sorry, we skipped over Marvin Mims, but uh, rounding out at 18, Demarcus Robinson, and then Xavier Gibson, who went much later here. I like that. Dylan Laube we talked about. Kavante Turpin and Devin Duvernay. Man, I really like this one too. I like this one a lot. I think you're a little thin at uh, running back, though. Um, I'm going to go four stars here. This is a four-star build to me. I, I really like the, the Super Falcon stack, though. All right. My guy, uh, Justin Herrera, at SemtexMex93. On a scale of one to Will Ospreay, starting from the 102, went with Josh Allen. All right. Uh, I get it. I'm maybe not a believer, but I would still make that pick probably in this format. Uh, you get Jaden Daniels with the upside. I like that. Marvin Harrison Jr., Devon A. Shane, Josh Jacobs, DK Metcalf, not a believer in T. Higgins. 
don't like Cole Komet as a tight end one, especially because you're relying on a rookie quarterback who has three amazing wide receivers and a full running back, full running back room. Uh, so Cole Komet definitely scares me as a tight end one. Lad McConkey, though, I'm a super lad. Isaiah Likely, again, if you were taking the shot on Komet there, I would not take Isaiah Likely here. It doesn't correlate to me. Uh, Roma Dunes, again, building with Cole Komet and Roma Dunes doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it's fine if you really like them both. Uh, I do love this, though. Brian Thomason Jr., Ty Chandler, Kamani Vidal, that's a good run. Gardner Minshew, you get two of shots at Green Bay wide receivers in Dontavian Wicks and Romeo Dobbs. Mike Gesicki, I love Daniel Carlson. He's formerly a uh, – has formerly finished number one uh, as the kicker uh, in all of fantasy, and people just overlook him completely. And I think uh, he's going to get a lot more opportunity this year. Not in on the Hayden Hurst pick. Uh, Aiden O'Connell. I like that you did pair Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell for your quarterback three uh, to lock that down. Then you took Luis Rezamit with your last pick. I'm still going to give you... I really, I really like how you started, but the tight end room really fell to pieces. You know what? We're going to go three and a half stars here. I think the tight end room is really going to affect you. Uh, I do think you have solid. I also hate T Higgins. So that's the, I'm going to dock a star. I'm docking a star for uh, the tight end room. And I'm docking half a star for T Higgins just because I hate him that much. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of joking, but I really just, I'm so out on T Higgins. Like it, I just think he's just going to be a big wet fart. <laughs> All right, we are finally getting into the final stretch here. We're already running on, on uh, an hour and 11 minutes here. I am going to speed round these to wrap these up, all right? <laughs> My guy, Vince Mapstone. I love uh, this build. Very jealous that Bijan Robinson fell all the way to 112. Uh, you get Bijan, Kyler Murray, Trey McBride, Stack, Justin Herbert. Brandon Ayuk as a wide receiver one. I love that. Brock Bowers as your tight end two. What? And then you get David Njoku also. Uh, Jonathan Brooks, Ladd McConkey, Zach Moss, Roma Dunes, Justin Fields. I love the upside potential of Fields. You get Blake Corum, who is an absolute league winner. If anything happens to Kyron Williams, you get Marshawn Lloyd, Jahan Dotson, Xavier Gibson. Tyrone Tracy, Michael Wilson, John U. Smith, Deontay Foreman, Braxton Berrios, and Jake Bates. Not super in on Foreman and Berrios, but I'm not going to ding you for your very last, last picks. My guy, you get the second one of the day. Five-star frog splash. Run the tap rope. Love, love, love this build. <laughs> All right, next up we have – oh, we got to get the five-star graphic down. We've got uh, at Pistol Pete 26 uh, from the 106. You got the stack that I wanted that I could not accomplish. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, love that. Uh, you took Garrett Wilson at 307. This is where I took Tua, and I love that you got Tua at 406, which I probably could have done, uh, but I thought there would be a quarterback run, and I was wrong. I misjudged the room. So shout out to you for uh, doing it better. Uh, follow up with Chris Olave. Uh, you get Ken Walker, Ramondre Stevenson. I like that. Uh, Terry McLaurin. Walker makes me nervous, but I like Ramondre. Uh, McLaurin I like. Luke Musgrave is a solid tight end, too. You get Rashi Rice. You get Jerome Ford, Chuba Hubbard, and Blake Corum. So I like um, kind of the scattershot approach. If you are going to take that approach for running back, uh, Ford and Chuba should have kind of roles at the beginning of the year. Corum, you would hope, by the end of the year. 
solidifies himself. Uh, you get the upside in Ricky Pearsall, especially if Brandon Ayu does get traded. Uh, Harrison Butt Kicker, Butt Kicker, uh, Tyler Algier, Dylan Laube, Kevante Turpin, Trey Tucker, Tank Bigsby, DJ Dallas, Braxton Berrios. Kind of goes off the rails a little bit in the back half. Uh, you know, we were headed for uh, potentially another five star frog splash here, but no, we're going with four and a half stars. I think there were some correlating pieces that you could have taken. Again, I'm really in on the idea of if you take Kenneth Walker, I would have loved to see Charbonnet um, instead of Ford or Hubbard there. I love the Blake Corum pick, but after uh, Butt Kicker, like, the it gets off the rails a little bit from all year down so we're gonna go four and a half stars still very excellent good good start at tim buke another from the 106 who was able to get the mahomes kelsey stack you must be peanut butter my friend because i am jelly patrick mahomes travis kelsey brock purdy Devonte adams debo samuel i see that stack dk metcalf James Conner, Raheem Mostert, Marvin Mims, Gus Edwards, Jackson Smith and Jigba. We get both of the quarterbacks. No, one's a tight end. It's Taysom Hill and Derek Carr. I like that. I actually think that's a sneaky good stack. Ricky Pearsall, Ty Tyrone Tracy, Quentin Johnston potentially bouncing back. Jawan Johnson. Yes, he is injured, but you have the correlating pieces. I think, think Taysom Hill has the primary role till Jawan Johnson can come back, if he can come back from that foot injury. Audrey Estime, I do like his upside. Deontay Foreman, Trey Tucker, Anthony Gold. I know those are kick returners. And you wrap this up with Matt Gay. Man, I'm struggling to find a reason not to, but I can't. We've got another five-star frog splash. I really love this build. I'm super jealous. I think if I could have pulled off something like this, I think the only, I would have taken maybe a running back, a really high upside running back instead of Devonte Adams. Cause you were able to get really good wide receivers after anyways, but I'm not going to ding you for that. I'm still giving you five stars. This is a very sexy build. All right. At the real underscore J money from one Oh six. Another guy who is very brave. Unlike me. And this is just beautiful to look at. Bijan Robinson, Kyler Murray, Trey McBride, Jaden Daniels. Mwah! Fucking chef's kiss, my guy. Like, let me just snort that up. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, damn! And then coming back with DK Metcalf, Michael Pittman, Rashid Shaheed, James Conner, Gus Bus, Toot, toot! Xavier Worthy, Marvin Mims, Brian Thomas Jr., Kendra Miller. Eh, that that's a little bit of a faux pas, but so far we're still like that's our why that's the running back four uh, for this team. Brandon Cooks, Pop Douglas, Tyrone Tracy. I love his upside. Jermaine Burton, we already talked about, should be Andre Yoshivash. Uh, Sam Darnold, a little bit weak at quarterback three, but I'm not going to hate on that. Love Colby Parkinson's upside. Dawson Knox, eh. Kaimi Fairbairn, okay. Hayden Hurst, eh. Oh, you know what? Fuck it. No, we're maybe I'm just in a good mood now, but five star frog splash. Oh, yeah. I'm loving this. We are on a run right now of just hot, sexy builds to finish off this show. Um, oh my God. There are so many more of these than I thought. All right. We're really going to speed things up now. What -da 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 -da. Uh, Lamar, uh, sorry, the person, uh, at Corey Dirksen, 106, Lamar, 207, Amon Ra, 307, uh, to 507, gets a three pack of running back and Derrick Henry, Isaiah Pacheco and Joe Mixon. We get DJ Moore in the six, Kirk Cousins in the seven. We get with David Montgomery. I love the high T approach. Uh, Cole Komet as a first tight end off the board, not enamored with that. Khalil Shakir, DeAndre Hopkins, Nick Chubb, Derek Carr as a third quarterback. That's pretty solid. Noah Fant, Damian Pierce. I, I don't like him. 
I know he, you know what it is, is because he's going to maybe have a role in the return game is what people think. And I, I don't know. I'm not buying in on it. And so maybe I'm like, I think I'm a little bit more of like, I need to see it to believe it uh, than other players who are always trying to predict the outcome as opposed to like, you know, trying to always see what will be as opposed to what is. Um, Devin Duvernay, Cavante Turpin, Sam Darnold, Darnell Mooney, Kenny Nwangu, Ronell Moore, and Velas Jones. I haven't seen that name before. We're pretty weak on the tight ends, though. I'm going to have to ding you. We're four stars on this bill. Four stars. Still very good. I love the high T approach, but we're going four stars because those are some pretty weak tight ends, in my opinion. All right. Uh, at JT Smith 1221 from the 103, Anthony Richardson, Jameer Gibbs, Kyle Pitts. Love that start. Uh, we get Drake London, Debo Samuel, DK Metcalf. Maybe would have taken someone other than Drake London because I don't see Kirk Cousins on this build. Though I do see Michael Penix later. Maybe you got sniped on Kirk and you ended up taking Geno instead. But um, after DK Metcalf was James Conner. Geno Smith, Raheem Moster, Brian Robinson, Keon Coleman, Cade Otten, you Otten, uh, Romeo Dobbs, Josh Downs, Jermaine Burton, Adonai Mitchell, Kaimi Fairbairn, and then we get Michael Penix. I love that you took a scattershot approach of quarterback tight end at the end with Penix, Jelani Woods, Sam Howell, Hayden Hurst, and Joe sleeping old man Flacco. Um, I really like this build a lot. I don't love – I actually really don't see a lot that I don't love. You know what? Four and a half stars. Four and a half strong stars. I think uh, – yeah, I think my only real qualm is like the – the. I like that you took the scattershot approach of taking like Auten and Woods and Hurst. I just would have maybe taken different guys. And then same thing with, like, I, the Penix pick is very confusing to me because you did not – like, you took Sam Howell to cover Gino. I get that. You took Flacco to cover Anthony Richardson. I get that. Penix is just purely, like, hoping Kirk Cousins fails or doesn't start. So I maybe would have taken somebody else uh, as, like, a, as a backup quarterback. But I, I really like the build uh, besides that. All right, Milestones Motor from 104, Patrick Mahomes, Sam Laporta, Mark Andrews, Jared Giff, Cooper Cup, Joe Mixon, Brock Bowers, James Conner, Devin Singletary, Lad McConkey. Super reach on Michael Penix. That's going to ding you. Ezekiel Elliott, Josh Downs, Harrison, butt kicker. We double up with kicker, though. We get McFearless, too. Why do we need two kickers? You're not on MFL. Wandell Robinson, Demarcus Robinson, Will Shipley, Zay Jones, Clyde Edwards, non-relevant, Alaire, Kenny Pickett, and Kendrick Bourne. Solid four-star build. I'm I'm so I don't for the Penix pick, I don't get it. And uh basically CEH, Kenny Pickett, not in on that. Will Shipley, not in on that. Uh I think you could have got a stronger two-pack of wide receivers instead of the Robinson gang. Yeah. Solid four stars still, though. I really loved your beginning. Oh, Jesus. We are we're glitching out here. All right. Paul Théoré. I'm going to pronounce your name correctly. Paul Théoré. I bet no one's ever said that to you. It's the French way of pronouncing your name. Bijan Robinson from the 109. Kyler Murray, Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts. Ooh, very, very nice start. Isaiah Pacheco. Um, hey, Pacheco, hey, I love this build, hey, or we're gonna get, hey, out of here soon, cause hey, it's Michael Pammon and Kirk Cousins and Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson, Jalen Warren, Jackson Smith and Jigba, hey, uh, <laughs> we go with Keon Coleman, Brandon Aubrey, Xavier Gibson, Tyrone Tracy, Jaleel McLaughlin, Trey Tucker, Ray Davis, the Senator, Ben Sanat. First time I've seen his name pop up. I love it. Uh, and you pair the Senator with AOC. You got the DC connection hooking up here. Uh, Jake Bates and Jalen McMillan. I really love this. Love this a lot. 
Um, yeah, that's a sexy, sexy five star frog splash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's because I was just singing my way through it. Maybe that's what I need to do. I need to sing the rest of these so that we can A, do them faster and uh, save my voice. And also so that I'm, I got a little more pep in my step, give you guys a little higher rating. All right. At P. Kiho 82 from the 103, we got Christian McCaffrey. Uh, I love that pick uh, falling to you at 103 and that you had the, the stones to make it over the quarterbacks. Uh, you, you got two rookie quarterbacks, so that makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams. Um, we skipped ahead, though. It's uh, So it goes McCaffrey, Jaden Daniels, Dalton Kincaid, Caleb Williams, Michael Pittman, Jake Ferguson. I love that. Ramondre Stevenson. Dallas Goddard is mid. He is the T. Higgins of tight ends. This man has never had 900 receiving yards in his entire career. Did you know that? He has never had more than six touchdowns. I, I He's my least favorite tight end because he is overdrafted every single year and just will – he will always – like the best you could hope for is that he matches the ADP you're drafting him at. Um, uh, Deontay Johnson, I like. Ty J. Spears, not a big fan of that one, but it doesn't really matter when you've got CMC. Uh, Russell Wilson, I like that you took a veteran to pair with Daniels and Williams. Uh, I would have taken Fields uh, at 12.03 to back him up so that you had a really solidified QB3, but you took Taysom Hill, who uh, probably has that flexible, you can play him anywhere, uh, but also has capped upside, I think. Uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, Jahan Dotson, Bucky Irving, Noah Fant, Darnell Mooney, Johnny Smith, Braylon Allen, Khalif Raymond, Darius Davis, and Tyler Bass. All about that bass, about that bass, no travel. We're dropping four stars, and we're on our way, yeah. This has turned into a fucking musical. I think I'm losing my mind, you guys. How many more of these do I even have? Oh, Jesus. Okay, no, we are we are actually close to the end. I was like, do I have enough for another episode? No. No, thank God we don't. Okay. We just really got to smash through these as fast as possible now. So apologies if you're at the end of the show, but I'm just losing my mind at this point. From the 106, Jets fan R. Are you serious? I love this build. CD Lamb, Dak Prescott, Kyron Williams, Jake Fergie, Licious, Drake London, Deshaun Watson, Nico Collins, Zach Moss, Blake Corum. I love that you took him a little early to make sure you have Kyron and Blake. But that's it. That's all you took for running back. I know it's only one that you have to start, but trust me, you're going to want them in the flex. Um, yeah, not impressed with that. Khalil Shakir, Deontay Johnson, Lad McConkey. My little McConkey. Tyler Conklin, uh, Jake Moody, Cortland Sutton, Romeo Dobbs, Pop Douglas, Gardner Minshew, Devin Duvernay, Nwangu, Carlson, and McMillan. Hmm. I really, I think your tight ends after Fergie Licious, who I love, but scares me that he's your only real tight end. I really, really am not, like, I'm very scared by this running back build. You took a lot of wide receivers, but for the wide receivers that you took, like, if you were going to take all wide receivers, I would have wanted a much stronger room than... And obviously, C.D. Lamb. Let's exclude C.D. Lamb. If I just told you that all you took was wide receivers and you have Drake London, Nico Collins, Khalil Shakir, Deontay Johnson, Lad McConkey, who I love, but like Cortland Sutton, Romeo Dawes, Pop Douglas, Devin Duvernay, and Jalen McMillan, like none of those names are really that impressive to me. And I think Drake London, we're just assuming that he's going to have 1,210 with Kirk Cousins. Like, you know... He could underperform that ADP. That really scares me a lot. Same with Nico could underperform his ADP. This is a uh, this this scares me a lot. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go three and a half. We were on a, a roll there for a bit, uh, feeling chipper. But Jets fan, thank you for bringing us down. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, at US Camp UT 0331 from the 107. Uh, wow, this is very wide receiver heavy. All right. 
So we went uh, super wide receiver in this format. C.D. Lamb, A.J. Brown, Puka Nakua, Brandon Ayuk, Chris Olave, Malik Neighbors. Now there's a fucking wide receiver list. Take notes, Jets fan. R. You're like, oh, he was shitting on my build. Uh, he didn't like my wide receivers. Yeah, look at these wide receivers. Look at this. <laughs> C.D. Lamb and then A.J. Brown, Puka Nakua, Brandon Ayuk, Chris Olave, Malik Neighbors. Damn. Damn. Uh, and then they even had more running backs than you. DeAndre Swift, Zach Moss. Um, for taking just three jabroni quarterbacks, you took Baker Mayfield, Daniel Jones, and Derek Carr, all potential starters. I get it. Uh, you're going to be hitting those waivers, though. I'll tell you that much. Um, I like Zach Charbonnet's upside, but I would have – like, I think DeAndre Swift is being overdrafted at 706. He had an excellent year with the Eagles. I think he's going to regress with the Bears. There's too many mouths to feed. It's a worse offensive line. It's a rookie quarterback. It's not as good of a system. Uh, I, I'm i so out on DeAndre Swift at that ADP. I, if you would have taken Kenneth Walker there, I would have liked this a lot more. Um, you get For your tight ends, you took two rookies in a vet in Sanat, Sanders, and Fant. Uh, Damian Pierce, Trey Tucker, Cavante Turpin, Isaac Garendo, Darius Davis, and Matt Prater rounded out. Look, you got a really strong wide receiver room. And yeah, you'll be able to just load up those flex spots with, but the rest of your team, your quarterback, running back and tight end spot and, you know, filling any and your super flex and filling those. I think you did yourself a disservice with the going too. you went too strong on the wide receivers. Like there was no reason to take Chris Olave and Malik neighbors. There really wasn't when you already had lamb and Brown new Paku, ah, Puka Nakua and Brandon Ayuk. That's an incredibly strong wide receiver room. There was just zero reason to keep pushing that luck and take Chris Olave and Malik Neighbors. Uh, I think you definitely could have got better quarterbacks, better running backs, uh, better tight ends. You really could have had a, a much stronger team. I actually think that in spite of the wide receivers, three stars. I'm sorry. Jets Jets fan and uh, USM KPT. I'm telling you, the, the super wide receiver builds are not – I don't think they're as viable in this format, and I'm really out on them personally. All right. D Snarker, 55816 from the 108. Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, Marvin Harrison Jr., Rashad White, Mike Evans, Devonta Smith, TJ Hawkinson, Tony Pollard. I am just reading off names at this point. Uh, Keon Coleman, Nick Chubb, Ben Sanat. Justin Tucker at 12, that's crazy. That's way too high for a kicker. I don't care if it is Justin Tucker uh, in this format. Like, There's so many kickers that can compete and do just as well as Justin Tucker on a week-to-week -week basis. Just not for me. Uh, Bo Nix, Antonio Gibson, Cameron Dicker, Roman Wilson, Cordarrelle Patterson, Jelani Woods, Colby Parkinson, I love that, Ina Smith, Jason Myers, and Trey Palmer. Solid three and a half stars. Three and a half stars. I, I think your running back room is like solid, but not great. I think you have some good wide receivers, but some of them, you know, scare me like MHJ in his rookie season, Keon Coleman in his rookie season. I love Roman Wilson, but you that, that loads you up with three rookies. And, you know, your only other wide receiver are Mike Evans, Devonta Smith. I, Kyler Murray was going later in most drafts. I think you did reach on him a little bit. I know you probably are like, oh, I super believe in it. That's fine. I get the rushing upside. Hawkinson as your tight end one, who probably isn't going to be available. And then to back it up with a rookie in Ben Sanat, who is a fullback hybrid, scares me. I do like Jelani Woods and Parkinson later, but yeah, this is to me a uh, solid three and a half stars. All right. Uh, at Brad Duff nine from the 112. Brees Hall, Jamar Chase, Jaden Daniels, George Kittle, Josh Jacobs, David Njoku, Amari Cooper. That's solid. That's really solid. I like that. Calvin Ridley and Will Levis stacked. Uh, a little early here, Xavier Gibson at 10. Gus Edwards, uh, Tyler Lockett, Justin Tucker. Again, Justin Tucker being overvalued in this format. Gardner Minshew, Pop Douglas, Theo Johnson, Jahan Dotson, 
Wandale Robinson, Jawan Johnson, Zach Ertz. <laughs> Zach Ertz. Uh, instead of Jawan Johnson, if you would have taken the Senator there, or instead of Theo Johnson, even like Ben Sanat and Zach Ertz, I think that would have been a better two pack. Um, Dante Hardy and Kane Nwangu. But I really like the beginning of this. Not as impressed with the second half uh, after Minshew, basically. And, you know, a little bit of a reach on Tucker and Gibson. Four stars. Four stars here. And then there were four. My God, we're finally towards the end of this. All right. Uh, let's take one last 30-second dance party, and we will be right back after that. Thirty-second dance party. All right, last ones here. Uh, I'm starting to lose my voice and my mind. Um, at up Z guy, at the 108, Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Joe Burrow, Evan Ingram, and then getting that to a stack. I love that. Brandon Ayuk, James Connor, Tank Dell, Zamir White, Dalton Schultz, Jordan Addison, Jerome Ford, Gardner Minshew, Minshew Mania. Pop Douglas, Noah Fant, Jake Moody, Damian Pierce, Darius Davis, Khalif Raymond, Malachi Corley, AJ Dillon, and Darius Slayton. So i not a big fan of the running backs. You know, James Conner being your first uh, running back, and then Zamir White, and just no correlation uh, after. Like, you get Jerome Ford and then Damian Pierce and AJ Dillon. Like, you know, instead of AJ Dillon – make that Dylan Laube instead of, uh, you know, instead of Jordan Addison or Dalton Schultz, you probably could have got Trey Benson there to really lock down that Cardinals running back room. Um, so different ways. I think you could have gone. Um, I also am not really in on Dalton Schultz. Uh, I do like Evan Ingram though. I like your first half of the build uh, basically until you hit after Zamir white. And then it kind of does get a little rocky after that. I don't hate Minshew as a potential QB3, but we're going three and a half stars here. Three and a half. All right. At Devin B44 from the 109, very heavy wide receiver start. So already I probably won't like this, but hey, I'm going to try and keep an open mind because I'm seeing some pieces late that I think correlate and that I like, but yeah. Anyways, we start at 109 with Tyreek Hill. We go Garrett Wilson, A.J. Brown, Isaiah Pacheco, Debo Samuel, Zay Flowers, Terry McLaurin, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers, Taysom Hill, Austin Eckler, and then we get the upside pick with Justin Fields, Jerome Ford, Josh Downs, Tyrone Tracy, Khalil Herbert, Braylon Allen, Michael Penix Jr., Greg Dulcich as your only tight end. Evan McPherson, Luis, Louis Rezamit, and Trey Sermon. Good, good Lord. Like, this is, I'm so sorry, uh, at Devin B44. This is just almost every pick that you made, I would have done not that. <laughs> like, um, this, this is going to be a low rating. I'm sorry. You're not going to like the rating. I can tell you that much. Uh Look, the only picks that I'm super in on, really, like Tyreek Hill and A.J. Brown, I understand Garrett Wilson's talent. I just don't believe in Aaron Rodgers. At age 40 off an ACL, with all his stupid bullshit, I'm just not in on Aaron Rodgers. Uh, so I think that's why I'm not that in on that pick. And I think you could have got a really premium running back at that spot instead. And then I like I like AJ Brown, I like Pacheco. I'm fine with Debo, but I'm not in on Zay Flowers. 
Terry McLaurin is fine, but you just didn't need him at this point. You already had Tyreek and Garrett Wilson and AJ Brown and Debo Samuel. You just didn't need Terry McLaurin for this build. It, it didn't make any sense. You needed a tight end desperately. And then Deshaun Watts and Aaron Rodgers, uh, two potentially injury prone quarterbacks. And it's like, I don't like to call NFL players injury prone usually, but like those guys obviously have had major issues the last few seasons. Uh, Taysom Hill, fine, but like it doesn't really, there's no upside, I feel like, with this build to get Taysom Hill here at the 10 09. It felt like you're reaching. And then Austin Eckler is your second running back. It's like, okay, maybe he hits, but he's still going to split with Brian Robinson. Uh, I like the upside in fields, but there's no correlating piece. It's not like you got Russell Wilson instead of Taysom Hill. That would have made a lot more sense. Uh, Jerome Ford, I like that. But again, you know, it's like he's not going to carry you for a season. There was no reason to take Josh Downs here. You already have a million wide receiver. Why would you take another in Josh Downs who has absolutely capped upside because there's no way he's going past Michael Pittman on the depth chart. And he is going to definitely seed some touches to Adonai Mitchell. And it's not even a team that like throws the ball anyways. It's Anthony Richardson. Like he's going to have 2,500 yards in a good season. Like that pick makes no sense to me with what you already have on this, on this team. And then like, I like Tyrone Tracy, but I just, you know, Again, Khalil Herbert, Braylon Allen, Michael Penix Jr. Those, I just don't understand uh, the logic of you know you. Sh- at this point, like you only took Greg Delsage. You should have been peppering some tight ends in here, some more running backs uh, with maybe a little bit more upside and path to like actually starting. Like Khalil Herbert, I get it. Tracy, I get it. Braylon Allen, though, like you again, you're banking. The idea that you would be banking on a potential injury of Brees Hall, but then your quarterbacks are Deshaun Watson and uh, Deshaun Watson and Aaron Rodgers, it's like, well, where was the thinking there? Where was the correlating? Why why weren't you worried about them being injury prone? Like, I'm very confused by this. I, I'm going two stars. I'm so sorry. Two stars. It's probably my least favorite one that I've seen all day. Uh. At Mech714 from the 109, uh, Amon Ra, Sam Laporta, Jordan Love, Derek Henry, Jared Goff. We are back, baby. We are all the way back. I love this Lions stack. That's going to be so juice. Uh, the Lions have a top 10 offense. The offensive line, so young, they should still improve. They have like 12 dome games this year, a dominating opening schedule. And I love that you got Derrick Henry, who could potentially be a touchdown leader. I love that you got Jordan Love, who just signed his new contract. Um, Amazing, amazing start in the first five rounds. And then you get Drake London, Amari Cooper, uh, uh, Zach Moss, Deontay Johnson, Geno Smith as the third quarterback, Devin Singletary. I like that value. We get the Senator Ben Sanat uh, and then Brian Thomas Jr., who I really like, his upside. This is where it goes off the rails. Tyler Algier, don't need him here. It's just it's a nonsensical pick. People are drafting Tyler Algier like Arthur Smith is still there. Tyler Algier is very much a backup. Bijan, he's not relevant at a 14th round pick to me. Um, John Smith, I like him, but again, I just I like other tight ends better. Uh Jake Moody, Wandale Robinson, Samaje P. Ryan. Demarcus Robinson, Ty Johnson, Troy Franklin. Look how late Troy Franklin went here. I love that. And then AJ Dillon, not really relevant to me. Um, I like this a lot. Kind of goes off the rails after Tyler Algier. We're going to go four stars. Maybe it's just because the last couple kind of brought me back to a pessimistic reality. But we're going four stars for this, for Mech 714. And... Our last one, finally, of the day, Captain Huggy Face. Thank you for being here at the end. Uh, one, uh, from the 107, we start with Mahomes. We get the Kelsey stack. I love that. So Mahomes, Kelsey stack, Derek Henry, Chris Olave, James Cook. I'm so in on James Cook this year. It's not even funny. I love that. You get David Njoku as a second tight end. You get Michael Pittman. I love this build right now. Geno Smith. 
as a uh, second quarterback. I like that. We'll talk about your last pick. Your last pick should have been someone else, but you can probably get him off waivers once waivers open up, so just keep an eye on that. Uh, but Tony Pollardson, Brian Robinson, Xavier Worthy, Blake Corum, Jonu Smith, Jahan Dodson, Kamani Vidal. Really love this running back room. This is a strong running back room. Uh, you have Derek Henry, James Cook, Tony Pollard to carry you. Brian Robinson uh, with some appeal. And then Blake Corum and Kamani Vidal, if they hit, oof. Um, you get Youngway Koo, Koo Runnings in the 16th. Adonai Mitchell, Luke McCaffrey, Rondell Moore for some upside at wide receiver. And then Braylon Allen at 20, Matt Gay at 21, uh, the kicker. I don't, you don't need a second kicker. And Malik Cunningham, uh, that must be just a preferential thing. Not relevant. Uh, with that second kicker or uh, Malik, I would have actually taken Sam Howell to match with Geno Smith. Uh, lock down the Seattle quarterback as your second quarterback. Uh, but otherwise, really love this build. Love the strong running backs. Love the Mahomes-Kelsey stack. I think uh, Michael Pittman is fine as a wide receiver one in this format. You also have Chris Olave. Hopefully he can bounce back a little. I'm not as in on it as other people, but those are two pretty solid wide receiver for that one spot. Uh, and then Xavier Worthy with some upside and stacked. I like that. Uh, and again, also potentially in that return role could be sneaky, sneaky. So I really, really like this. We're going to go four and a half stars for the last one. Four and a half stars. So we are ending on a high note. And I'm going to wrap this up here because we have been going long enough. I am never doing this shit again. But I super appreciate every single person. Uh, we got over 50 responses for this. Um, so, you know, I I super appreciate every single person who responded. Uh, it's always hard as a content creator when you put stuff out there and you kind of don't get the responses that you're hoping for. This was the complete opposite. I was absolutely overwhelmed with responses. So thank you so much uh, for everyone uh, who sent in their teams and uh, accepted uh, my reviews. Again, um, they're just my opinion and like opinions. Everyone's got them. Uh, uh, sorry, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got them. So uh you know take mine with a grain of salt um but i love you guys i appreciate you guys for watching this and for um you know if you made it an hour and 47 minutes into the show like man thank you so much uh if you're still listening super kick that subscribe button i'm gonna stop yammering i'm gonna let you guys go we will catch all of you guys next week on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20, they're chasing him. They're not gonna get him. Waving his arms, bare chested. Somebody stop Look that out. man. Here comes